Good afternoon, everybody. It's David Schlothauer here with another detailed tropical weather outlook and discussion for Wednesday, October the 16th, 2024. So here's a look at the latest satellite imagery provided by tropicaltidbits.com on Invest 94L. You can see on the current satellite imagery, this is what we have going on right now. Here is Invest 94L right here with all the deep convection that we're starting to see here. So this is showing some signs of tropical organization here. So now this system is going to be moving or is generally moving off in this general direction, helped by the trade wind flow coming in out of the easterly direction. So you can see these low level clouds, you can see some spin right here. You even have northeasterly flow happening on the um, northwestern side of the circulation. So right now, we are really keeping an eye on Invest 94L today. Okay, here's a look at the latest seven-day graphical tropical weather outlook from the National Hurricane Center in Miami, Florida. And what we have going on is this area that we are still watching. This has a 40% chance of tropical development in the next five to seven days. So again, if you are in, say, the Dominican Republic, if you're in, say, Puerto Rico, some of these windward islands right here, you're definitely going to need to watch this one still closely because there's that medium chance from the National Hurricane Center. We're also keeping an eye on another area down here near Belize as well as Honduras where we have a 10 and 20% chance of tropical development with this area highlighted as the tropics remain a little busy out there but not as busy as they were a week ago. Now the question really remains, will Invest 94L develop into our next system? Well, looking at the latest GFS model, this is the American model, ran from the United States government. And as we can see here, this again is our GFS model up here. And when we do take a look at the map here, these green areas right here, let me get my Epic pin out here in this video. And as we have here, again, this green area is where it's raining, where we have the model picking up maybe a chance of rain, maybe some thunderstorms. And of course, these lines of pressure or ISO lines or ISO bars are lines of equal pressure. The closer packed in they are, the stronger the winds actually are going to be. So as we go and put this into motion here in the next, say, um, couple of days or so, you'll see there is our tropical wave right here barely being picked up on the gfs model been showing that for a while now the downtrends do continue that there's barely anything here if you're near say oops and i did not want to do that um here is the dominican republic here is puerto rico right here here are the windward islands again you're just going to get a few trade wind showers maybe a thunderstorm but when we look at our other models, they're going to show us something a little different. So putting this into motion, you can see really not much going on. Now, maybe another area forms up near, say, the Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico, but that looks like it's going to go northeast because we have this trough of low pressure. Now, let's take a look at our European model, okay? The ECMWF, this is the free version. This is not the paid version, so therefore, we're only going to get 24-hour increments. But what you're looking at here is areas of spin. So when you get these yellow colors right here, so let's highlight that. This is little areas of spin. Here's a good area right here. So when you get these red areas, that's a lot of spin in the atmosphere at 5,000 feet, all right? So as we go forward, you can see how this all plays out. Let's go forward. You can see there's a European model indicating that little area of circulation more aggressive than what the GFS actually shows. And this is going to be passing to the northeast of the Dominican Republic and then eventually north of the Dominican Republic. Now going forward, you can see how that system um, does try to develop a little bit over, say, portions of Jamaica as well as the southwestern Cuba area. So now when looking at the Canadian model, this is the CMC model showing us basically the same thing in the atmosphere, how much spin there is, right? So again, there is our area of disturbed weather. Let me circle it in here so you all can follow me closely. There it is right there. And this is going this way. 
Okay, it's going to be headed towards the west northwest at about five to ten miles per hour. And as we go forward, you can see how this all plays out. So you can see it does try to develop a little bit. This would be, by the way, Friday morning, Friday late morning on October the 18th. All right, so in a few days here, we have that system. And as we go forward, you can see that the system does try to develop a little bit more. Doesn't look to be a closed circulation, which is needed for the definition of a tropical depression. But nevertheless, we do have to watch that. And then going forward, you can see that the system does try to do something. Look the red on your screen. That is actually tighter spin in the atmosphere. This is very close to the Dominican Republic, or actually on top of the Dominican Republic, as well as the Eastern Caribbean, actually the Eastern Cuban region. That's what I meant to say. And you can see there's just northwesterly flow here. So this system doesn't look like it's going to go turning north right away. And instead, it might just get buried down here, possibly just to the north or the northwest of Jamaica. This would be for next week on Monday. So Monday, October the 21st. And this would be a little over five days out. Now, one last model I wanted to show you all is the ICON model. This is the German model. And as we do play this through, there's our system right there. Follow me. This is the surface wind plot. And as we go forward and forward, the system does try to develop the ICON not giving up on this system just yet. It still thinks it's going to try to develop into a tropical depression or storm. And you can see right there what it does down to 994 millibars, all right? So putting this in a reference, let's get our locations out really quickly so I can show you all with what we are dealing with. So let me make this a little smaller so you guys can see. So there is Puerto Rico right there. Here is the Dominican Republic, and there is our system right there, 94L, possibly, still possibly, could become our next name storm. It is not a guarantee. All right, I want to make it clear in this video because people have told me yesterday that I'm going a little over the top with this. I'm clearly not because there's still some development possibilities out of this. And then you can see it does try to get very close to the Dominican Republic and then it bounces back north, which is a very awkward thing for this system to do. But of course, that's why we have our models. That's why we have different global models to tell us the range of possibilities. So now, the question really remains, where is this going to be headed? All right, so a lot of you are probably wondering that watch this from Jamaica, from the Caribbean Basin, as well as the Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico. Right now, when we um, highlight this again, let's bring that up, you can see that the majority of our models still have this going into the northeastern portion of the Caribbean, such as Puerto Rico, if you're on the U.S. British Virgin Islands, if you're on Guadalupe, if you're Martinique and St. Lucia down here, just keep that in mind that there is going to be a possibility here of some impacts, very minor. We're not talking anything significant since there is a lot of dry air on the system. But it cannot be ignored because we still have our models that bring this awfully close to the Dominican Republic, just to the north, in about three to four days. So keep that in mind, okay, for a lot of you that are wondering about this. There's no risk or any threat to Florida. Let's not put Florida out there, folks. There's no risk right now to Florida. In fact, Florida is not even on the map here. So I wouldn't worry about it yet. Now, looking at our intensity guidance here, you can see that most of our models are indicating that this is going to be a low to mid-grade tropical storm. But because of the uncertainty that is in the forecast right now, let's um, look at my prediction. First of all, the SHIPS model, which stands for Statistical Hurricane Intensity Prediction Scheme. That's what SHIPS or SHIP stands for. Okay, and then you have your other models. So right now, most or some of the models indicate that this is going to disintegrate in about a couple of days. However, there's that concern that this lives the wrath of the drier air and this tries to develop. So therefore, my intensity forecast is this black line and I am still below most of the model guidance. So that's me not hyping this up 
or going ahead of myself because there's still that uncertainty. But yes, some of these models go high in tropical storm or even a low grade hurricane. There's a couple of models there that do bring this to Cat 1 hurricane intensity, which again, I disagree on. I am not putting a lot of hype or any gripe on this just yet because again, there's that level of uncertainty. We still have to see if a surface low is able to consolidate deep convection within a moistening environment with westward extent, enough upper ocean heat content and sea surface temperatures to get something to actually form. And right now, it doesn't look like this is going to do something significant at all just yet. Now, when looking at the sea surface temperatures, they are definitely on the warm side out there. We have sea surface temperatures in the mid 80s across the Caribbean, across the southwestern Atlantic, where our system is going to be moving. And just for reference, our system is going in this. So it's way over here right now. It is moving pretty much like this. So it's going to be moving over this warm patch of waters that are in the mid 80s. So right around 84 to 86, maybe 87 degrees Fahrenheit, which is more than warm enough to support tropical development. Now, as far as our temperature anomalies go, let's take a look at that. You can see that sea surface temperatures are around about a degree and a half to two degrees Celsius above average, which is quite phenomenal for this time of the year. It is mid-October, folks, and we're seeing sea surface temperatures here that are quite warm around 1.5 to almost 2 degrees Celsius above the long-term average all across the Caribbean and into the southwestern Atlantic. Now let's take a look at our upper ocean heat content because this is how much heat is being stored in these oceans. It's like octane fuel for these tropical storms and hurricanes. So what we're seeing right now is definitely a lot of high numbers all throughout this region we're seeing anywhere between 150 to as high as 200 units, which is crazy to say the least. So there is a lot of juice that the system could work with in its favor for tropical development. And when we take a look at our um, sea surface temperature anomalies, they are definitely well above average for sure. Lots of heat ready to go. It's a matter of will we get enough uh, moisture to get these um, thunderstorms to be more persistent and to be pretty strong for a low pressure system to form. Right now, it looks like everything is there. It's just the drier air out there right now within this system's environment that is not going to allow this system to develop in a hurry, which is good news. We do not need another hurricane or another major hurricane. Bad news if that happens. But the good news is nothing yet for Florida. Do not worry about Florida. I know a lot of you are still recovering from Hurricane Helene and Hurricane Milton, which devastated Florida and the Carolinas. Well, um, Helene did, not Milton, um, and Milton went much further south. But still, you guys are recovering from that. I really hope the recovery efforts are going as well as they can, and you guys can get your power back on as quick as possible. But anyways, if you did enjoy this video, please don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you did like today's presentation, hit the like button and also share this video with their family and friends on social media. Now, of course, this is a trial run version of me using a Promethean board to kind of uh, annotate in an easier way, easier format, and where I could express myself a little bit better than instead of sitting on a chair and presenting you all this. So please let me know how you all enjoyed today's trial run version of this tropical weather outlook and discussion using a Promethean board, because you guys are very awesome. I love you. There you go.